Right, so now that 3CX is installed and working on our system, what we're going to do is log in to the web admin and take a look at some of the options uh, for our uh, setup. So I'm just going to log in. and for the most part what you're going to do when you um, have an IPPBX all you're going to be uh, dealing with for the most part um, are the extension statuses uh, so that's there so as you can see that the extension that we created during the install is not registered at the moment and if you have multiple extensions listed then you'll be able to see the status of those particular extensions so it'll be in a call, it'll be dialing, um, it'll be available, it'll be busy or not registered in this case. Um, you'll also want to manage and add uh, extensions so that's down here. As you can see there's our extension that we created earlier. Um, also you're going to be uh, administrating uh, PSTN devices so things like um, on your local network if you have an ISTN service or a PSTN phone line then you can get uh, what's called gateways and these basically you plug uh, the cab one cable into the phone line or the ISTN line and then you plug a network cable into the device plug that into your network um, and then you configure 3CX to talk to it and then it obviously communicates with the uh, the P the PSTN network or the ICN network. Um, so if you just have uh, say a small office with say four lines that are coming in, then you can just connect all of those up to this system. Um, it can run on um, another server uh, with a, a couple of more applications on. So it's not you don't have to buy any more hardware apart from obviously the PSTN device itself. Um, and obviously some phones. Um, the next thing is VoIP providers. Now these um, are uh, service providers out on the internet that offer SIP trunks um, to uh, PBXs or to companies that have PBXs um, and some of them can be very cheap, some of them can be very expensive. Um, a good one is uh, Gradwell or uh, VoIP Talk um, here in the UK. Um, those offer both SIP and IAX trunks. Um, SIP is the preferred way to connect everything together because it's um, it's an open standard. Uh, but essentially, you can e you can route your calls um, over a VoIP provider, which may be cheaper than. Uh, paying your PSTN uh, service provider. So here in the UK um, we have uh, BT and if you were to have your VoIP provider with say Gradwell then on some things Gradwell will be cheaper on um, other things the BT might be cheaper um, and what you can do is you can set outbound rules to say um, for example if Gradwell was cheaper for mobile calls then send all of the mobile calls, so anything that starts 077, send all of that out through um, Gradwell. Anything else, send out through uh, the PSTN or the ICTN um, gateway um, on your network. The next thing that uh, you'll be uh, dealing with mostly is the inbound rules, and these basically apply to um, any number that you have, so any telephone number you can then assign to an extension or a ring group or um, a call queue um, or a digital receptionist uh, which is basically just um, an IVR or an auto attendant in some cases and obviously that is just press 1 to speak to the operator, press 2 to speak to sales, press 3 to speak to support etc. Um, and that's m so on the inbound route rules you'll have um, numbers and then you can basically say where you want that number to go. Um, outbound rules, as I said before, 
uh, you can specify uh, different dialing uh, patterns based on a number so like I said before if um, dialing out through Gradwell was cheaper for mobiles then you could obviously say 077 go by Gradwell if uh, it was cheaper to go via BT for uh, mobile numbers then you could say go by BT um, the digital receptionist is just a, an, an IVR so if we just click on add for uh, just a, a quick demo you can see that you can have uh, on key one you can say um, end the call so as soon as somebody presses um, key zero it will just end the call uh, you can tell it to connect to an extension, a ring group, um, a queue another digital reception so you can have multi-layered um, IVRs or auto attendants or digital receptionists however um, you prefer to view this as you could transfer it to a voicemail uh, you could call by name or repeat the prompt um, so if you had uh, please press 1 for sales please press 2 for support etc you could just have press 0 and then it would repeat the uh, prompt back to you uh, then obviously we've got here call queues and call um, groups so we're just going to click on our um, extension that we had earlier I'm just going to drag this across so we can see some of the options so on the general tab we have all of the general information re related to this particular extension so the actual extension number the first name last name email and mobile number of um, whoever this person is so if it was uh, Jane Doe so it would be um, it would be Jane Doe and then their email address so j.doe at um, example.com and then a mobile number of 077 for example um, the ID and password these are used when you want to connect a SIP phone to the PBX so in order to configure a, a standard SIP phone so a SNARM, a Yeelink, a Linksys uh, there's uh, three main pieces of information that you're going to need um, optionally there's four pieces of information um, those are the IP address of the uh, PBX so in our case it would be um, 192.168.200 um, um, and then 195 I think for this particular computer that I'm working on then it would be the username which is the ID then your password and some phones optionally want you to enter the outbound proxy not all of them but some of them um, and that would again be the IP address of um, the SIP server. And down here we've got voicemail configuration. Um, and here we can say enable voicemail, uh, play the caller ID in the voicemail, the uh, PIN number for this particular user. Um, and then obviously just some additional options to say do you want it to be emailed, do you not want it to be emailed um, and so forth um, and then if we scroll back up so on forwarding rules what we have here is uh, we can forward the call based on any number of things um, so you could say uh, you're only available um, if you're so you could say send the call to my mobile and these options you could log into the system as this particular user um, so if you type in 1000 and then the password you'd be able to log in as that user and obviously that user would be able to change her own um, op uh, settings um, so if we click on away so we can f if you're away from your desk where do you want the call to go if you're out of the office where do you want the call to go then you've got some custom options um, and then you've got some exceptions so um, you could say if um, uh, if for example Bob calls you on a particular number and you don't want to take the call then you could just throw him to voicemail or um, if it's in, in a particular um, time period then you could say you know do this that and the other uh, phone provisioning 
this is uh, where you can actually provision the phone so for example if you had if you knew what the MAC address is you'd enter it there and then you'd select a phone from the list so for example uh, let's have a, uh, a, a Yeelink phone um, and I don't know the MAC address for one off the top of my head so we'll just use um, 0041331 I think um, and the MAC address would be the MAC address on the bottom of the phone and um, what would happen is if you have a DHCP server capable of doing option 66 then it would the phone would boot up contact and get an IP address from your DHCP server then you would get option 66 um, given to the phone that would then point to this and this would then give the phone its um, configuration so down here you can say uh, what codex you want the phone to use um, generally we'd use a law uh, so PCMA which is G711 a law and then any other codec after that and then on other there's just other information um, regarding the extension that you can enter um, so if for example you didn't want this user to for example if you had this PBX accessible to the outside world but you didn't want uh, this user to log in from the outside world you could say uh, disallow use of extension outside of the local area network so outside of 192.168.200 um, obviously your local network and then you've got some office hours that you can configure so if it's in office hours then go to this extension if it's outside of office hours then go to a voicemail or go to another extension or um, optionally divert to another voicemail uh, another um, extension or phone or another number so that's the basics of 3CX um, so we've covered in this video um, installing 3CX onto a system uh, the initial configuration and we've gone through some initial options um, that 3CX uh, gives us to program a phone and obviously some usability options for that phone so my name was Philip Cooper and thank you very much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it